Are they grade eights? And yeah, welcome back. Obviously, I'm not in class this week. And this week, we are going to review some of the work that you guys got last week. And we are still on static electricity. And last week, I gave you guys a couple of things to do. I gave you some keywords to copy in your books. We're going to go through those keywords today. And we are also going to have a look at the slideshow about static electricity. Hopefully you all watched the video that I posted, this one here on static electricity and what it's all about. So yeah, let's jump into it. First of all, there's only a couple of keywords that you guys have to have a look at and understand properly before you can actually understand what static electricity is. So the first word is actually static electricity. That is an electric charge that an object has as a result of friction, not flowing electricity. Now you're asking yourself, what is friction? So friction, that is the rubbing of one object against another object. Then, with friction, we get something called a static electric charge. That is when electricity is then stored in one place. Then we get something called electric force. That is the amount of attraction or repulsion between charged objects. And then a discharge, that is a release of electrons. The discharge will be greater if the object has a greater buildup of a negative charge. Now, you have to remember two laws for grade eight with regards to electricity. The first one is, the law of attraction that is when opposite or unlike charges attract therefore a negative charged object is attracted to a positive charged object and the opposite of the law of attraction is the law of repulsion that is when like charges same charges repel therefore a negatively charged object is repelled by a negatively charged object or a positively charged object is repelled, pushed away by a positively charged object. Okay, so this week I want to dive right into static electricity and electric charge a little bit more and I've prepared a little slideshow for you guys. This is also on Google Classroom and let's have a look and see what this is all about all right as you can see electric charge first thing that i always think about when i think about electric charge is thunderstorms and lightning so before we even dive further into it you need to understand that electric force fields occur and that is when the pulling or pushing force in static electricity can be explained with the concept of a force field. Now, if you've seen um, Darth Vader over here, you know that he can use the force according to the story as well. But static electricity actually have this invisible force field. So positive attracts negative, remember, and negative attracts positive, but negative repels negative and positive repels positive. So this is a new way to understand how objects can affect each other with attraction or repulsion without, very important, touching one another. An electric force field surrounds every particle that has an electric charge. So for instance, even a cell phone has an electric force field around it and you will notice that when you take a magnet closer to your screen it actually interrupts the signal and the force field itself electric charge creates a force field in the empty spaces around it an electron found in this force field is pulled towards the positive charges or it can be pushed away from the negative charges the strength of an electric force field depends on many things, including the amount of charge, the distance involved, 
and the shape of the objects. The further away objects are from each other, the less force they experience. The electric force indicates the amount of attraction or repulsion between charged objects. Sparks in static electricity can be explained in the following way. A discharge of electrons causes the spark or shock of static electricity. This means that a stream of electrons is released from an object and travels through the air to another object. Sparks are usually seen when a negative charge are transferred to conductors, something that can conduct electricity. A spark will only occur if there is a gap of air between the objects that releases the electrons and the object they are being transferred to. The electrons jump across that gap of air. They heat the air to very, very high temperatures. This causes the air to glow and expand. We see this as a spark or heat as it crackles. You guys see? Thunder, lightning, very, very good example of that. Now, there's also dangers of static electricity at petrol stations. When someone shocks you with static electricity, it is not harmful. You may feel a small shock and it might give you a little bit of a fright, but normally, it's not dangerous. However, there are certain places where static electricity can be dangerous. One of these places is at a petrol station. Fires as a result of static electricity at petrol stations are uncommon, but they do occur. Static electricity can be dangerous at a petrol station as there are petrol fumes in the air and they may ignite. So think about it, a gas stove has got a starter button, which is a spark in the air. And it releases gas, just like petrol fumes is gas being released. So when there's a spark and when you have fumes, it will ignite. Now, danger of static electricity in lightning storms. Lightning is a huge spark of static electricity. Particles rub together against one another uh, in clouds causing the separation of electrons. Negative charge build up in the cloud. Eventually, the electrons are discharged from the cloud to the ground. As you can see here, you see the negative charge build up there, separating itself from the positive. And now you can see that negative charge wants to attract towards the positive charge, which is the ground, and then it finds the shortest route. And we have thunder, that's the sound, lightning, that's the electric spark. A little bit of extra information for you guys if you didn't know this, the high fault regions of South Africa and Lesotho have amongst the highest lightning strikes per square kilometer per annum in the world. Each year, unfortunately, people are killed either by being struck directly uh, or their homes catch a light when these get struck by lightning. And that's a nice um, photo of Johannesburg and the uh, skyline there. And uh, let me just get out of the slideshow. Now, kids, we also had uh, a little bit of work. Let me just go there. Activity one, I'm just gonna open it up so you guys can see. And Hopefully you all have now completed activity one in your books. Okay, so what activity one was all about, you will need a plastic ruler, a piece of silk fabric, wool, cotton or fur, a piece of toilet, tissue paper or sawdust. Here's your method. Step one, tear the piece of paper into small pieces, as small as you possibly can. Step two, rub the plastic ruler a, a few times on a piece of silk material. Step three, bring the ruler then closer to the pieces of paper. Repeat the process using the different types of material. Now we have a couple of questions that I want you guys to have answered in your books and I will give you the answers in the next video. So look out for those, uh, that video and, it's, uh, and the answers. Once I'm back, 
we will review the the answers and i will check your books so make sure that you've got the questions and answers in your books all right grade eights i hope you have a fantastic week please go through the slides a few more times go through the keywords and make sure that you understand the concept of static electricity static buildup what is an electric charge and if you do not understand please make sure to email me and send me your questions have a fantastic day i'll see you guys next time